Welcome to the Dragon Course. This is the Quick Starter, and Quick Starters are always very exciting. You get to show the whole opening in just one video, and isn't that fun? I think the Dragon is a great opening to Quick Start things. Their scope is relatively small, and um, uh, the main plans and ideas are really easy to explain. Still, though, of course, if you want to um, understand the subtleties, you really have to go through the chapters, but I think uh, this Quick Starter will give you a very good very good idea of what it's all about and um, you can just go and start exploring the dragon the opening arrives after moves e4 c5 the sicilian let's look uh, first at the main lines and then uh, walk our way work our way backwards to the sidelines the main lines is knight of three uh, d6 d4 he opens sicilian cd4 knight d4 knight of six knight of three and g6 that's the move that defines dragon and in the dragon you have to understand a big plus we have is our pawn structure is really, really sound and we don't have any pawn weaknesses. The only one you could say is a weakness is e7, but it is so far, so far, so deep in our own camp that white can almost never really put pressure on it. And that means since we have a very good pawn structure, potentially uh, pressure down the uh, semi-open c file, that means that if nothing weird happens, um, we're doing really well and also if we ever get into an endgame we're also doing really well because pawn structure is a factor that's very relevant in endgames. The only downside of the dragon is that uh, while we develop the bishop to g7 and it's a beautiful uh, strong bishop, white can trade it potentially with bishop e3, queen d2 and bishop h6 idea, castle quickly to the long side and try to start attack on the king side. So we basically have to watch out for the attack for the rest, we're doing really well, and that's why the main line against the dragon is the Yugoslav attack, the setup with bishop to e3, f3, queen to 2 And that's really the only way to really challenge our setup. And um, we'll start with that as well. You go bishop g7, highly important, and something I'll keep repeating in many chapters. Knight g4 would be a blunder, because after bishop b5 check, we will lose this knight, unfortunately. Bishop b7, queen takes g4. So knight g4, definitely not a thing. Bishop g7. Here, if queen d2, now we can play knight g4, because nobody's attacking the knight. But white plays f3 first. The castle, knight c6 first, uh, leads to the same thing, very likely. White goes queen d2, knight c6. And here, white has three main moves. Uh, long castle, very natural, allows d5. That's a big, uh, big line. Bishop c4, stopping d5, is the old main line. And... There also is a move g4, which is very tricky, and will also be part of the quick starter because it's very important to know what to do against it. We start with bishop c4, the traditional main line. I recommend knight takes d4, a relatively rare forgotten sideline that's really, really very strong, I think, and also saves us a lot of unnecessary uh, work in the old main lines that are not even really working well for black. Knight d4 uh, is what I recommend. I talk about bishop d7 a lot in the chapter where I touch on the history and um, options black has in this position. There's a separate chapter for that, but now we look at knight d4, bishop d4, bishop e6. Bishop on e6 is uh, well placed, we'll often put the bishop there. It controls important d5 square, c6, c4 square, challenges the bishop. White has a choice here, either to take or the main move bishop b3 back. If take, f6, the pawn structure changes. It's not a bad change. Pawn e6 guards the d5 square and the double pawns are not as weak as they seem. There is a long-term potential here for black. For example, if long castle, we bring the queen out to a5, 